Does anyone want to communicate with us? Sitting here. So today we are here at the Carroll County SPCA for a pet adoption event. Now we didn't come here with the intention of purchasing a pet, but you never know with us. You just you never do. If one happens to be meant to be with us, you know what's gonna happen. But right now, I'm focused on one thing. You know what that is? What? I'm going catfishing. Oh, you're going catfish. Oh, she got it. She got it. Look how playful these guys are. They would be such a nice addition to your family. If you guys have been wanting a pet, be here to come check out this place. This is pretty awesome. I don't know how often they have events, um, the adoption events, but they should have it. <laughs> I would hope they would have it pretty frequently. Right? You want to just be taken home to your forever home, don't you? Look how playful she is. She's such a sweetheart. He's such a sweetheart. We were just playing for a couple of minutes. I think I wore her out already. Oh, I don't know. She got it. She has the catitude called, I don't have to get out of my bed to play. <laughs> oh, there she goes. There she goes. Good job. I used to always do this with our cat. I used to put the ribbon on her head because it looks like she's got a wig on. Look how funny that is. <laughs> she's playing with the wig. <laughs> she likes it. So there's a couple cats in here. I kind of want to adopt this one, guys. Like this one. It's so pretty. Can you pet her? Come on, kitty, kitty, kitty. You see her bleach? Oh. oh, careful. What's that? Well, that's the perfect cat. I'm not interested. There's one under here, and I see one under there. Wow. I'm really excited about this place, guys. We've been hearing about this. Um, watched a couple of videos about it. It looks pretty cool. So, right off the bat, the first display is biting the bullet versus anesthesia. And that's where the term comes from. They literally used to give them a bullet to bite down on, amongst other things. I know they used to do it with pieces of wood. Um, but here's the anesthesia that they used to use also. Wow, yeah, they used to use chloroform back then. Oh wow, they even used to have uh, microscopes back then. Look at this. Talking Germ about germs. Oh. Yeah, they didn't really, they weren't educated about germs back then too much. Um, I guess they were mostly concerned about saving lives and not, you know, I guess they figured they would just deal with that <laughs> later. Mm. Here's anesthesia, chloroform, like I said before, the chloroform was the main, um, that was it, that was what they used. Oh wow. The operating theater. Wow. This is cool. I'm sure that Lisa is finding this interesting. It is. Looks like where I went to school. Just kidding. Well, you did dissect cadavers, didn't you? Yes, we did. The just the head and neck region. Yeah, head and neck mostly, mm -hmm. but the butt too. But yeah. what do we have over here? Oh, these are actual bones. It looks like, aren't they? Yeah, probably amputated. Let's see. Oh, you use it for teaching. This is for teaching. Um, but they look real. Oh, it says it's wood. Oh no, I think they are real bones. They look yeah, like real bones. Real. I know the foot is. That's an ivory handle. You already got ivory. Yeah, elephants. Used for vaccination? I'm sorry, what? What's that have to do with How do you do a vaccination with a pocket knife? Hmm. I'm confused. What? They didn't get paid regularly? Oh, $13 a month plus board and clothing. Wow. <laughs> I can't imagine, but you have to account for inflation and everything but dang gone like you had to wait till the end of the war so that's probably kept them in there how do you measure up lisa is probably the size of this little guy over here 
Why don't you give everyone the second one? I don't know. I think you're in between the first and the second one there. <laughs> I am almost, I'm between these two. I'm between this guy and this guy. <laughs> Average soldier back then, this is interesting, here we go, was um, 5'8 and a half, 143 pounds and 25 That's years old. Little. Now, for you guys that don't know, um, they used to have uh, the younger guys here. Um, they used to be musicians. Um, however, a lot of them lied about their age. They were supposed to be 18 years old. A lot of them lied about their age. And back then, they didn't have proper documentation to show for sure, you know, what age they were. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That was the ambulance. Wow. Look at the bloody rags. This used to be the stretcher that they were using. This looks like an exam table. So guys, this is an ambulance display. Apparently the drivers had a different type of uniform with red, white, yellow, or green patches, stripes, and badges. This was before the Red Cross. Wow, look at that stretcher. It's wooden. Imagine how heavy that would be. Poor guy. Here's your ambulance. Horse carriage. All right, guys, we are headed down this hallway with soldiers on both sides of us. Where are we going? Where are we going, Lise? I guess to the Civil War. Surgeon John Wiley, 6th New Jersey. I guess that's probably him in the tent, I'm not sure, but that was his tent. This actually did belong to him. Can't believe it's still in such great condition. often contain alcohol, opium, and other strong drugs. <laughs> wow. What have you found? This is crazy. The chest set says it's made of gutta percha, which actually what's used in root canals. What, filler? It fills into the root. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Wow, look at this beautiful quilt. Somebody did an amazing job on this. I love the steamship, which actually looks like it was a hospital. How awesome is this? So the Civil War Medicine Museum is actually two floors. Uh, this is the first floor now. We were just on the second. Looks like this man is pretty severely injured. They've already discarded some of his pain medication there by his foot. This is called a field dressing station. See the rocks? Yeah. Just to protect them from bullets. Uh, okay. Well, his gun is all messed up. Somebody broke it in half or something. See, this is exactly what I'm talking about. See this? This is what I'm saying. Like, the soldiers would be severely wounded and they would just, like, fall over dead, like, on the fences and stuff. But probably the same thing with these big rocks. The sharpshooter aimed at this uh, soldier's head and missed, but hit his leg, actually his knee, because he was bending over to tie his shoe. Oh, look at this. This is called amputation. This is the most gruesome scene, I think. Oh my goodness. Plus I have a bad leg. I can, well, I can feel this. Well, that's almost what happened to you. That is almost what happened to me. It would have happened to me if they had their way. At least do not reach into the exhibit because the alarm will sound. It says it right here. Lisa oh. had a problem with that before. Matter of fact, we're gonna take her back to that place. That was the National Museum of Dentistry Oops. in Baltimore. This poor guy. What's wrong with him? He's getting an amputation. He'll be, He'll be fine now. He'll walk right off that battlefield. They had the most amputations. Guess what joint? Hip, joint. thigh, knee, leg, toe, finger, forearm, or upper arm. Knee. 
close. It's the hip. Really? Mm -hmm. That's weird. Look at that funnel they have on his head. I guess that's uh, that chloroform. Yeah, they said they used yeah, what's it says chloroform in that jar. Wow. They don't want you reaching in here grabbing these instruments. This poor guy, look, he lost his arm in that picture. Dang. Mm. Look at this poor guy behind him. He's got his head all busted up. Mm. Wow. A lot of pain. What's back here? Looks like the instruments. Oh, here's the instruments they used surgically, which looks like something now you'd see out in your tool shed. Saw, hammer. Yeah, it looks like a real hand. 16 to 18 year old Caucasian. It belonged to. Oh my gosh. It's so skinny. Too. Naturally preserved. What? The Antietam arm is cold. I guess he found it. What the freak? Found near a bridge. Burnside Bridge. Oh, oh. it's haunted there. Oh, yeah. Burnside. I've heard of that. Yeah? Yep. Here's splints for broken bones. Wow, look at that. That would not be comfortable. Holy moly. This looks like it's made out of wood bark. Guys, this is so interesting. I did not know this until just now. But apparently they used to have hospital railroad cars. And it looks something like this. This is pretty cool. Sad, but uh, probably the fastest way to get them from A to B. You know? Look at this. Just chilling in their beds. I think Amtrak still has these ones. I think, I think it might have been Amtrak, yeah. <laughs> Some things never change. Wow, it feels like we're in a train. This is neat. Ooh. Those people scared me for a second. Yeah, it's a whole other house. I guess it's a house. He has a fig leaf. Wow, look at his... Look at his amputation, that's horrible. Now look at this instrumentation set compared to what we saw for the field. These are definitely nicer, like shinier, better metal, not rusted. Yeah. This looks like dental instruments, some of it. Wow, this is the hospital drug chest. Okay, so if you take a look in this glass jar here, uh, this is a specimen from gangrene. I know a lot of people have heard of gangrene, but this is what it actually looks like. It looks pretty nasty and very well preserved. So there's actually a little sign over here that says that pine branches were used in hospitals as decoration and to help freshen the air in the wards. What a smart idea. This guy's just laying here. It looks like he's just had an amputation of his left arm and the surgeon is standing over him, I guess, checking to see how he is feeling. Imagine he's not feeling too great. Wow, guys, check this out. This is a, uh, this is actually a Union Hospital that was located in St. Mary's County, Maryland. That's the Eastern Shore area. How cool is this, though? It actually looks like kind of an old prison. What's that one in um, Philadelphia? It looks like that, like Eastern State Penitentiary or something like that with the um, hub and spoke type design. So this is a really nice display. I just showed you guys part of it, but over here, basically a shout out to the nurses that were back in the Civil War times. They did so much to keep up morale. It says here too that the chaplains were always nearby. Um, they most of the time spent everybody's last couple hours with them. There was nobody else around for them really. Um, so the chaplains played a big role in comforting them. Uh, Lisa's doing something over here. Let me see. So what do you think of this place so far? What is your opinion? It's our dark past. Of this Civil War medicine oh, that's good museum. Especially the, it's graphic, definitely... the graphic nature of the limbs. I I'm going to get you this. I think this might help you feel better. What is that? I think it's like a, it's a fracture box. I don't feel so good about my broken leg now. Right. This is what they could have put on you when you had your right. your broken femur. I don't feel so bad. Although it would have been up higher. This is probably for your like uh, yeah, they probably didn't even do these uh, hip, tibia, right fibula, now. fibula. They probably didn't have a rod and screws or No. But this is probably more like the tibia or fibula. Yeah. I can't imagine what the femur box would have looked like. Oh this is what the femur would look like right here. <laughs> they would probably just amputate oh. it. They would give you a combination crutch and stump holder. This would be yours. You know, 
it's similar to dentistry back in the day. Instead of a root canal or a crown, they just extracted your teeth. Yep. Get a denture, get a crutch, you know. It's... Wait, they had male nurses back then? I did not know that. Yeah. It says many nurses who served in the hospitals were convalescent soldiers who were given extra duties until they were able to return to their regiments. Interesting. Oh, Walt Whitman, he's a very famous writer. He visited the hospitals. That's cool. He's like basically a celebrity. He looks a bit like Kenny Rogers. A little bit. The beard. You gotta know <laughs> when to hold him. You gotta know when to amputate them. Does anyone want to communicate with us? Sitting here. Can you tell us your name? Greg. I heard, I know I heard surgeon. Okay, guys, we're walking back through the train. This is the other side of the train exhibit. Oh wow. Look at this wheelchair. Whoa. We got some quilts in here. Amputee utensils. Physician. Well, the average soldier marched eight to 13 miles daily in all kinds of weather on all kinds of terrain while shouldering 30 to 50 pounds of equipment. So here were the main problems that they had to deal with. Malnutrition, dehydration, hypothermia, sunstroke, headaches, nerve damage, bone degeneration and bone spurs, muscle soreness and tearing, torn or loss of cartilage in knees and hips, leaking fluid sacs in the knees, joint and back pain, blisters, bruises, lacerations, infection, and chronic cough. That is quite the list of medical issues. <laughs> Those are tiny. And there's their cup. That's why they were dehydrated. This is what soldiers took with them on the march. Number one, pressed flowers. That's interesting. Unless it was from their wife. Maybe, or home. Homemade ID tag, heart disease, and that's I don't know what that is. New Testament Bible. Oh, nice. Book of Common Prayer. Do you know why they used to wear bell buckles? To hold their pants up. And that's what I always thought, but it's not true. No. It was another piece of armor. It protected them from bullets. So many soldiers were protected from their belt buckle. I did not know this until recently when we were visiting Gettysburg. I read about that. Okay. And I was like... Good to know. Never knew that until I was this well, many think about years it, yeah, old. It's another metal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I feel like this was taken right out of the movie Hannibal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Except for this one has a bullet hole. Look at that bullet hole right there, guys. Here's another bone. This is a, is it a humerus? All right, guys, so this is dental care for the Civil War soldier. What's going on over here in this diorama? Apparently, he's extracting a tooth from an uncooperative patient. On his ear and his arm. Oh, that happens sometimes. Oh, my goodness. Dental profession was in its infancy during the Civil War. Look at this denture. This is a partial. Oh, my God. Do you see this? It's, it's constructed with German silver and porcelain teeth. Yeah. What the heck? Oh, it has a clasp on it. I bet that tastes tinny. Here's a uh, tooth key. That's how they... That's how they used to do extractions? Yeah, they twisted it. Mm. Oh! Tooth powder. So tell me what tooth powder is. Here it tells right here. Would you use it today? It was consisting of chalk, powdered myrrh, powdered orris root, and red. Ew, gross. The mouthwash is made of soap, alcohol, honey, and perfume. It sounds very <laughs> gritty. Look at these. These are called holding coffins. Oh, it yeah. says, in the mid-1800s, undertakers had a few options for temporarily preserving the dead. Holding coffins contained metal trays above and below the body, which, when filled with ice, preserved the body until embalming or burial. The grill work upon which the body would rest has a wooden support on which the head of the deceased would rest. 
Viewing took place through a hatch above the face. These coffins were usually only available for rent in larger cities, not rural areas. Upon burial, the body was placed in a permanent coffin. So let's take a look at these things. So this would have been the foot, like the foot of the, of the coffin here. Wow, those are really thick, but I guess it had to drain all the fluids and stuff. You know there's gonna be some fluids because it took them quite a while to get from A to B back then. It wasn't like today where they could just fly them. Wow, man, that's crazy. So here they're embalming. It looks like they're actually using a door propped up on some barrels here to do the embalming process. And there's the undertaker right there. I did notice though, this guy is missing his toe tag. I wonder if he's ticklish. Tickle, tickle, tickle. <laughs> so we are now in the gift shop. We're gonna take a look around and show you guys all the cool stuff they have in here. I think you hang these up. Even have books that are signed by the authors. That's pretty neat. If you happen to need a new coffee mug, they definitely have you covered. Quite a few to choose from. You can even get yourself an Abraham Lincoln hat. Look at these cool pens, guys. I just told Lisa <laughs> I would get her a femur pen. This is her award for breaking That's her femur just a couple years ago. Keep it to my femur. <laughs> Which one do you want? Pick one out. Pick that special one out. I thought you would uh, win the award because you picked it. No, you definitely get the femur award. You get the femur, okay. <laughs> so we are currently getting some lunch today in Gettysburg. This restaurant is called The Pike. We've been here one other time. Never sat in the actual dining room though. It was, um, we were here for an event. There were some bands playing, which was really cool. It's been a couple years now. Um, we're getting ready to do a premiere right now. Just want to give a shout out to Adrian. She's the first one in the chat. So what's up, Adrian? Thanks for being here early. So I got an appetizer today, guys. I got some Maryland crab soup. What did you order, Lise? I'm waiting for a turkey open-faced sandwich. Sounds awesome. What'd you get for your side? I ordered sweet potato fries. Ooh, I'm gonna have to try one, okay? Yeah, they're a little lower carb than potato fries. I ordered the same thing, guys. I got the turkey open face. We both got gravy on the side. And I'm gonna try one of Lisa's sweet potato fries, maybe more than one. You know how it is, you can't eat just one. So gonna try that. I did get some mashed potatoes, so she can try a little tiny bite of my mashed potatoes, but I, I'm a sucker for mashed potatoes. I gotta have some good mashed potatoes so every once in a while. We're getting ready to do our premiere right now, so we'll see you guys in the chat. Just wanted to show you a glimpse of that turkey and mashed potatoes before I dig on in. It looks so good. There is a little sneak peek of Lisa's sweet potato fries. How big? Looks really good. <laughs> So guys, we are just sitting here at Lowe's. Lisa just went into the store real quick. She just had to get a key made. Uh, but wow, these clouds are super scary right now. Look how dark it is out there. It was just lightning pretty bad. It looked like it was really close. So let's just sit here for a minute and see if we see it again. Get ready to watch the people run. Here she comes. She's just getting here in time. <laughs> it looks like a tornado is about to hit. Oh gosh, was that thunder? It was thunder. Look at this. This is perfect timing. It just started to pour. Woo! You made it. How did you do with your key making? Oh, I had to wait in line. Oh, really? And then it was a little tricky. We might want to just sit here a minute yeah. until this rain slows that was down. Lucky. I've heard thunder. Did you say rut row? Let's call it. I made them. Let's see what you, you have here. Yeah, two. Yeah, one free too. All right. Well, that's a good deal. Buy three, get one. Buy three, get one free. Buy three, get one free. Buy three, get one free. There's the doctor key. Look how cool. That is pretty awesome. Looks just like you, Lise. <laughs> I think that's you. Wow, look at this rain. I know this is crazy. This rain. Is like crazy. It's like a sheet of rain. Where's the outside world? 
So as soon as we turn the camera off, guys, lightning struck really close to us. Ooh. Here comes the thunder. Let's see if it happens again. I'll turn this off a minute so you can see. Oh, oh really yeah, maybe leave the roof closed. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, no. It sounds like it's raining. 